evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, September 19th, 2017. We are honored to have Cub Scouts from uh, Pack 524 with us this evening. Is Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts? All right, why don't you, gentlemen, why don't you come up and lead, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Rise. Time, guys. I to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, guys. Jeff. You can please call the roll. Councilmember Griscoviak. Here. Councilmember Kicker. Here. Councilmember Demer. Here. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Wells. Mayor Cook? Here. One absent, Wells? Thank you. First item on our agenda then is to adopt this evening's agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Demmer. Any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the agenda is adopted. Uh, the very first thing we have this evening is a proclamation for the Anoka Ramsey Community College Nursing Day, and I think we've got some special guests here. You want to come up, and I'll and I'll meet you out front. Anywhere, anywhere outside is fine. Right? I think this is good. <laughs> good to see you. All right. Well, we have a proclamation for uh, the uh, tremendous 50 years, as college 50 years is nursing there. So let me read the proclamation, and then I'll let you kind of tell us a little bit about what's going on down there. Whereas quality, affordable, patient-centered, registered nursing, higher education is provided by skilled faculty at Anoka Ramsey Community College who are experts in their field, and whereas thousands of registered nurses have been academically and clinically prepared during the past 50 years and now play a vital role in service to the community as employees in local health care facilities, including hospitals, nursing homes, group homes, and home care facilities, and whereas the demand for registered nursing services will be greater than ever because of the aging population of our country, the continuing expansion of life-sustaining technology, and the exploding growth of home health care services, and whereas more qualified nurses will be needed in the future to meet the increasingly complex needs of healthcare consumers in this community, and whereas the hard work and dedication of nursing faculty, staff, and alumni of Anoka Ramsey Community College will directly impact our local community. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City of Coon Rapids, on behalf of the Coon Rapids City Council, hereby proclaim September 21st, 2017, to be Anoka Ramsey Community College Nursing Day in the City of Coon Rapids, proclaimed this 19th day of September, 2017. So there, what can you tell us about this is awesome? It really is awesome. We've, um, the program in and of itself has graduated over 3,500 nurses since um, 1967. Our first graduating class was actually in 1969. Our first admission was 1967. Um, the program has continued to grow. We currently admit 224 students a year to the nursing program, um, and it continues to grow. We, in 2014, increased our admissions, and hopefully, if we can get more space, we'll increase our admissions again. And they can get a two-year, or? Mm -hmm. They can actually get a combined degree. So currently, we are a part of the Minnesota Alliance for Nursing Education. So students are duly admitted to Anoka Ramsey Community College and Metro State University, and they can get their four-year degree right on the Coon Rapids campus. They can do all four years there. They do the first five semesters through Anoka Ramsey, which is 75 credits, which means that they have the most affordable nursing degree in the state because the majority of their credits are done at the community college level and the tuition is so low. And then- One of the most beautiful sites in the state. It is, it is beautiful. <laughs> and we have, um, three new nursing simulation labs that have put in in the last um, three years and um, continue to increase the technology as technology increases in healthcare. So we're growing, expanding. It's fun and exciting program. Excellent. 
And I'm Kent Hansen, I'm president. I was here before you all in uh, about four years ago now when I first got here. Probably some changes since then, but <laughs> I'm sure appreciate Mayor Cook and council persons and our partnership with the city, um, our local hospitals. It's just wonderful, the partnership with Mercy and, and everything. It's, uh, we're really proud to be here and we'd love to be part of this community and really thank you for your support and thank you for the proclamation. Excellent. And this guy's been a help to us for a long, long time too. So, oh, thank, you. thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. And that would be the uh, that would be the top ten rated community college yeah, winner of the ASP. That, but people tell me that I say that too often. But oh, you can never say that too much. <laughs> we're one of the top ten colleges in the country, and we're very proud of that. And of course, nursing is one of the reasons. The wages that our, our graduates come out and making and giving back to the community is pretty huge. So that was a big factor in our top 10 college. So nice. thank you. All right, I'll get this signed and I'll give it to you. Okay. Second item on our agenda this evening is a second proclamation. And I don't believe we have anybody here from the Alexander House this evening. Um, I'm going to take a drink of water first before I go through this. <laughs> Excuse me, thank you. And, um, Alexander House has asked the City Council to proclaim October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And all proclamations from the cities within Anoka County will be displayed at Alexandra House's annual Walk for Hope on September 30th, 2017 at Bunker Hills Regional Park in Andover. And the proclamation is, whereas the community problem of domestic violence has become a critical public health and welfare concern in Anoka County, and whereas domestic violence is a crime, the commission of which will not be tolerated in Anoka County and perpetrators of said crime are subject to prosecution and conviction in accordance with the law, and whereas over thousands of women and children have and will continue to access assistance from Alexandra House Incorporated, a domestic violence service provider, and whereas domestic violence will be eliminated through community partnerships of concerned individuals and organizations working together to prevent abuse while at the same time affecting social and legal change, and whereas October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and whereas during National Do Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Anoka County organizations will inform area residents about domestic violence, its prevalence, consequences, and what we, as a concerned community, can do to eliminate its existence. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City of Coon Rapids, on behalf of the City Council and citizens of our city, officially proclaim October to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the City of Coon Rapids, proclaimed this 19th day of September, 2017. All right. And our next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from September 5th, 2017. Councilmember Demmer. So moved. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Kicker. Any discussion? Oh, Druskoviak, sorry. I, I tried to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try and sound different. <laughs> Motion by Demmer, second by Griscoviak to approve the minutes from the September 5th, 2017 council meeting. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we have one, two, three, four, five items on our consent agenda this evening. The first item is to adopt resolution 17-96 to accept the 2018 grant for a full-time DWI officer. And um, 
So the Minnesota Office of Traffic Safety DWI officer will work peak nights and times when drinking and driving occurs. The eight counties with the most impaired related deaths or serious injuries were, were chosen as being eligible for grant funds. And the eight counties are Anoka, Dakota, Hennepin, Olmsted, Ottertail, Ramsey, St. Louis, and Stearns. I think that's a list you actually don't want to be on, but we are there, so we're eligible. The, um, the grant is funded by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and the total length for the DWI officer grant is expected to be for four years beginning in 2015. However, grants will be written for one federal fiscal year at a time, and the 2018 federal fiscal year ends September 30th, 2018. The Coon Rapids Police Department has developed a work plan and budget approved by the OTS. The award covers a full-time sworn officer's salary, fringe benefits, court costs, and a squad car with necessary equipment to enforce traffic laws. The squad car operating costs, uniforms, and weapons are not covered by the grant. The grant is federally funded by NHTSA with impaired driving funds. Federal guidelines require this money be spent on projects to reduce DWI incidents. Because of this, both the officer and the majority of equipment can only be funded for the enforcement of laws prohibiting driving while impaired. What is a nice piece of this though, if the officer is called to or responds to an incident other than an alcohol related driving offense, the time spent on non-DWI related enforcement exceeding 15 successive minutes must be paid for by the agency, but that seems like a small price to pay if we've had him eligible or able to help when we've needed him. Yes. Um, so the first item will be uh, approving resolution 17-96 authorizing the continuation of a 2015 agreement with the Minnesota Office of Traffic Safety accepting a grant to fund a full-time officer through September 30th 2018. The next item on our consent agenda is to approve the Atlas staffing contract for contracted labor at the recycling center and um, Item six is to adopt resolution 17-101, accepting an enhancement grant and amend the 2017 budget for the Coon Rapids Recycling Center. And that would be for the multi-unit waste reduction project and site concept traffic plans, which is not tied to the ordinance we passed, just the information and the educational we've been doing. Okay, good. Um, item seven is to approve the final payment for project 17-18 of street reconstruction. So we're approving the final payment to Latour Construction Incorporated in the amount of $12,309.76 for project 17-18 street reconstruction. And then the final item on the consent agenda is to adopt resolution 17-100 the fire department would like to purchase a display case to be housed in fire station one for the purpose of displaying historical fire station artifacts and fire prevention material. These are funds available in the fire suppression budget for maintenance due to less maintenance needed for repairs on fire trucks that can be reappropriated to allow for the purpose of the purchase of the display case. And that is the end of the consent agenda. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Council Member Kicker. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Demmer. Any discussion? No questions? Nothing? Yes, sir, I have, have one. So on the, the DWI um, officer, so is it any impairment? So if it was like a drug impairment or distracted driving mm. impairment, do those count or is it only DWI? Well, the purpose for being out there is to is to find driving while intoxicated. But that said, when they run across people for other moving violations, is that um, that's part of the process. So, we any of those uh, distracted driving offenses or impaired by drugs or something like that is part of the enforcement package. Okay, thanks. So, if he stops somebody for speeding that he thinks might be impaired, they don't get a free pass. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the consent agenda is approved. We are up to item nine, 
which is to consider resolution numbers 17-23A sub 9 and 17-23B sub 9, awarding contracts for Coon Rapids Boulevard and Main Street lighting installation. And we had one, two, three, four, five companies we thought might be bidding on it, and only two actually came through with complete bids on them. All right. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. It's the, it's the peak season. It's the end of the year. Uh, jobs are out there. Um, and as you can see, it cost us a little more than we anticipated as well uh, due to that same reason. Okay. All right. So we're looking at awarding Kilmer Electric, the Coon Rapids Boulevard, and the Main Street Project. They were the low bidder on each of them. Um, $113,850 for Coon Rapids Boulevard and $54,450 for Main Street, if I have my numbers. Okay, excellent. Council, need any uh, explanation on that or anybody want to make a motion? Okay, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. Um, motion to adopt resolution number 17-23A sub 9 and 1723 b sub 9. Um, awarding the contracts for the Coon Rapids Boulevard and Main Street lighting installation projects to Kilmer Electric. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Kicker. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just noticing that this doesn't happen very often, but this is coming a little bit over the engineer's budget. As Mr. Hammer noted, it is due to the timing of the project. Is that timing in any way going to cause a problem with finishing the installation? I notice if we don't get started until November, we're into the freeze season already. Is, is there any issue with it happening that late in the year? No, Council Member Kostowiak, members of the council, that, that's not going to be an issue because um, if you recall, Main Street is just replacing the poles on the basis. So no underground work needs to happen on Main Street. The, the schedule issue there is I want it done before Black Friday. I don't need lane closures and things <laughs> occurring on Main Street. So if they don't get it done prior to uh, Thanksgiving, they won't be undertaking that project. But they've assured me they'll do that. Uh, Coon Rapids Boulevard does have more work to do there, but they can start that as soon as this contract is initiated and get the conduit, the wire, the bases, all that stuff in the ground. So by the time the materials come, they just have to put them up. And that can be done pretty much in any temperature. All right. In Minnesota, you just never know when the snow is going to come, when the ice is going to hit, when, you know, those utility vehicles are going to be out there clearing our streets. So. <laughs> oh, this year it was June. That's what I read. Demmer. So one thing I noticed that was a little weird was that the, uh, the Main Street one was actually considerably under, about 15% under, but then the Coon Rapids Boulevard one was about 30% over. And so it was ends up being more than twice as much for the Coon Rapids Boulevard one. I, I was just curious, what what is it that made the Main Street one easier in their mind, but the Coon Rapids Boulevard one harder in their mind? Because it was weird to see the same vendor go both high and low on the same essentially project. Council Member Denver, again, it was that condensed schedule. And while there are more lights on Main Street, that again is just putting them up. On Coon Rapids Boulevard, you have they had to prepare the plan for us to review and approve on how they're going to wire it. They need to coordinate with the uh, private utility companies to energize it. They need to do traffic control plans and permits through Anoka County. And so the cost of those materials and all that extra work for them and the constricted time schedule um, had it come in higher. Okay. Mr. Chamber, if I remember right, the, the wiring down on Coon Rapids Boulevard literally all needs to be replaced because none of it's in a conduit. Correct. Whereas on Main Street, it's literally all conduit and they're just replacing the light, the lamppost. That's what you explained, right? That's exactly right? correct. Okay. Yep. All right. Any other discussion? Did that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, it just sounds like whatever is different in that one is the more expensive thing. So yeah. it, makes, okay. it makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, don't get all technical like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Mr. Stemwell. And Mayor Council, I was just going to mention that both of these projects are being financed through um, different uh, tools. The first at Main Street through the Riverdale Area Fund, the second, Coon Rapids Boulevard through Pool TIF, um, both eligible expenses in those areas and not coming out of the general fund or um, the levy per se. So. And that pooled TIF, 
Could you just give me the just the <laughs> little Reader's Digest on that, the pool tip for that area where those lights are? Sure. It's funded. it's dollars that have been captured through an existing TIF district that um, the city holds and can control, but it can only be applied for certain expenses. And so, uh, for a project like this, we're improving the streetscape and the transportation. Then it would apply, and it's in the right area uh, for that to work. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion carries. Next on our agenda is item 10, consider resolutions ordering preparation of feasibility report and preparation of plans for project 18-1 street reconstruction. Would normally we have Mr. Hansen here to go through this at this point or? Not. Oh, Mr. Mayor, this is just the preparation of the feasibility study. When they are complete, then he comes in and talks about assessments and the projects. Uh, the, the same version you received at the work session here a few weeks ago, okay. except with uh, a little more detailed information. All right. So we're looking at approximately 4.7 4 miles of residential streets. And again, this is one of those where it's 29 different streets. So I, I won't list them out, but it's a good idea to take a look at the, and see if your street's on there. Um, and I was just gonna look, yeah, so it's, it's primarily the streets that aren't being done this year over off of Foley Boulevard are being done next year. <laughs> it's kind of the rest of them. Yeah, kind of, looks like we're completely redoing Ward 3. Is that what's going on? <laughs> works for me. All right. Um, so it looks like we need a uh, motion uh, to order the preparation feasibility report. Sure. Councilmember uh, Johnson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'll move adoption of the following resolutions, and and do you want them one at a time, or can can we take them together? So that we adopt resolution 18-2 parens 3, ordering a preparation of a feasibility report, and adopt resolution 18-2 parens 6, ordering preparation of plans. Did we get a new handout? It should be 18-1. Did I miss it? You said 18-2. Yeah, 18-1 sub parens 3, 18-1 parent 6. Hold on. I'm on the next one. I oh. opened the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let me withdraw that and move adoption of 18-1 parens 3 preparation of the feasibility report and adopt resolution 18-1 parens 6 ordering preparation of plans. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler. And this is all under project 18-1 as part of the 2018 street reconstruction program. Uh, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that one carries. I think I know who's going to be making the motion on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So now we're uh, now we're looking at item number eleven. Consider resolutions ordering preparation of feasibility report and preparation of plans for project eighteen two street construction, which is nineteen streets, and these are from uh, down off of Coon Rapids Boulevard, Mississippi Drive area, but not Mississippi Drive. That was already done last year or the year before. Last year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. The, the streets north of that, and then on the other side of uh, the tracks, looks like the uh, 119th, 118th, things like that. All right. Your Honor. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you. I will now move adoption of Resolution 18-2, <laughs> parens 3, ordering a preparation of a feasibility report, and Resolution 18-2, parens 6, ordering the preparation of plans so that this additional project can begin. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Kraskoviak. <laughs> <That'd be good. laughs> um, any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item 12 is to consider resolution 17-102, the Springbrook Drainage District. 
and this was a special taxing district that was established in 1986. Um, it was created to fund storm drainage improvement in that drainage basin and the parcels included in the district contributed a special tax to help pay bonds issued to fund the project. The bonds have been paid and area-wide improvements are not anticipated in the near term. Creating and dissolving special taxing districts consists of essentially the same procedures which include identifying the parcels involved, holding a public hearing, and then adopting an ordinance creating the district. Once the district was created, the county assigned a new taxing district number to each parcel within the district. Um, at this time, the recommendation is that the district be dissolved. It is inactive, but does, not, but does inhibit adjoining parcels to be combined, which would be helpful in certain cases. So we're looking at setting a date for a public hearing of October 17, 2017, to dissolve the district. In addition, on October 17th, staff will bring forward for introduction an ordinance dissolving the district. Um, is there anything else? Um, Sharon's not here, but Mr. Stemmel, anything else you want to cover on this? Mayor Council, no, I don't think so. It's um, kind of part housekeeping and a part uh, to avoid any issues going forward, as it mentions with um, if there are parcels that want to combine, this would not allow them to do that. So um, I think this probably could have been cleaned up uh, some time ago, but we just caught up to it now or recognized it now, and so here we are. Yeah, okay. Very good. So it looks like we need a resolution. Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. Move adoption of resolution 17-102 calling for a public hearing on October 17, 2017 to dissolve Springbrook Drainage District. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler. Discussion? Councilmember Demmer? May not be able to make that meeting, so I just wanted to ask a question now. Um, I, I was asked by a, a resident about the timing of this. Um, and the, the ask was basically, uh, it seemed weird to be doing it now when one of the last parcels in that area is in the midst of construction. And so I, I think the, the jux of the question was, what's the hurry? Why don't we wait till next year when that building's done and make sure that everything pans out? Um, perhaps you've already answered it by saying that you, you know, it inhibits adjoining parcels, but I guess if we caught any wind that anyone wants to adjoin versus, you know, so, so if it's actively inhibiting someone, that, that makes sense. But I, I the, just wanted to make sure that that question was asked and then maybe it makes sense to answer that at the public hearing as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can answer it. Yeah. It's my understanding that there is a property down there who is looking to expand on the opposite side of the road. They have a contiguous parcel that they felt it might be better suited to expand onto that contiguous parcel, but it may build, it may be a building across property lines, which is prohibited, so there would have to be some sort of a, a plat or parcel uh, combination. So it, it is in reaction to a request from somebody that said, this is problematic for me. Okay. Um, I guess the second question would be if this was dissolved, and then, and I, and I know that the the properties that were going that went in, they all did their paperwork. They all did everything they're supposed to do. But if then something proved to be problematic because of a miscalculation or whatever, it, what what options do we have at that point to improve drainage in the area? Uh, Councilmember Demo, that was a long completed project long ago, so it, yeah. it's well past the time. Um, I would say that if any other drainage enhancement had to come up down there, we'd have to reevaluate the drainage area anyway. So we'd probably have to develop another district unless it just miraculously ended up being the same boundary okay it, and very and making, unlikely but possible making a new district isn't any more onerous than exactly this the process, process we're doing here mr brody i think clear on that this is more for the, the funding part of that and the funding has already occurred the bonds have been paid off all the assessments have been paid and so as mr Himmer pointed out we just would, if we needed another one we would start another one with the same process I guess I would just encourage that at the public hearing, before the public hearing, maybe some of that be gone through if there are, are, are people who are at the public hearing. So there's not a pool of money that's going to be distributed once we dissolve this. It's just right. dust in the wind here. So you, you get rid of it, you let them merge, and then if you see a problem, you make a new district. Yeah, all right. 
Thank you. Mayor. Um, Council Member Kraskovia. Just a follow up that since you're going to be gone from the meeting. Uh, it says it's inactive right now, so I was just wondering how long has it actually been inactive? You know, we're dissolving it now, but it's been inactive for a while. That is one I cannot answer. <laughs> that's, that's a sheer that, question. That's a sheer question. I'm not sure when the bonds were paid off or when that was considered to be inactive. Okay. That's when it's considered to go inactive as soon as our bonds are paid off? Okay. So we can, I, I'm, I'm hearing that it went inactive before many people here. Oh. Yes. <laughs> 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 it's been some time. It was 20 years ago. Yeah. I think it was a project from like the 80s, if I'm right. not mistaken. Yeah, well, it yeah. says it was established it was in 1986. Yeah. So, yeah, right. like you said, 10-year bonds. bonds would have been yeah. last year, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we had a motion and a second on this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Roger. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and then that public hearing will be on October 17th for that. Next item on our agenda is uh, consider resolution number 18-4 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for bunker renovation at Bunker Hills Golf Course and authorizing solicitation of bids. Now I'd like to actually ask Mr. Anderson to do the ask as long as he doesn't read that first line where it talks about things being too large and deteriorated because that sounds bad. And I only like really good things about that golf course because I love that golf course. Well, so. Yeah, Mayor Council, we're, we're asking you to consider this resolution and as stated in the memo, nine holes have already been renovated uh, and reduced. Um, bunkers have been renovated and reduced. This would address an additional nine holes um, to, to our new standard, which is a grass-faced down to a flat bottom sand bunker, which is just a really good application for a golf course. Very sustainable long term. Um, it's linerless. Currently, we have liners in our sand traps, and it, it d does discuss that in the memo that are not um, currently in vogue. They were at one time, but just do not hold up over time. So, this is a really good thing. Our user group has, has really loved what they've seen. Um, of the ones that have been re renovated, and we're excited about the, the opportunity to uh, to hopefully do this. So, um, nine holes this year, and if we we're allowed to move forward with that, we would come back and propose a final nine in 2019. Excellent. All right, council. Sorry, Tim, it's not going to happen. No. Oh, <laughs> Council Member Demmer. <laughs> Uh, move for resolution number 18-4 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for bunker renovation at Bunker Hills Golf Course and authorizing solicitation of bids. Okay. <laughs> They're just painfully dragging this out for you. <laughs> Motion by Demmer, second by Geisler. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries unanimously, Mr. Anderson. See, I resisted the temptation you to call it a money bed. <laughs> 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 yeah, you Can you also move them like into a parking lot so I'm less likely to go? <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, next item on our agenda is to consider resolutions levying the miscellaneous 2017 uh, sub one appealed assessments. And let me, uh, pull it right, there it is. Uh, so the assessment hearing on miscellaneous assessments was held on August 2nd, 2017. Property owners who were objecting to their assessments re were referred to the Board of Adjustment and Appeals for review, review at their meeting on September 7th. After the Board of Adjustment and Appeals heard objections on September 7th, the following recommendations have been made. And, um, it looks like they uh, did yeoman's work again. And um, I don't know, is there anything that we want to cover from this other than beyond that? Otherwise, we're just looking for a motion to um, adopt the resolutions. And uh, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> council member kicker <laughs> I make a motion that we uh, that the council adopt resolution 17-97 and 17-98 and 17-99 adopting 2017 sub 1 miscellaneous special assessments uh, 
contested miscellaneous assessments one year, three year, and five year. Second. Thank you. Motion by <laughs> Kicker, second by Demmer. Everything just hanging. <laughs> uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Next we are at the open mic portion of the meeting. Is anybody here to address council this evening in open mic? No? All right. We don't have any reports on previous open mics and we are up to other business. You, oh, I thought you were showing me a page. I went, oh, what did I miss here? No, you're good, sir. All right, okay, good. Um, so the uh, pet, pet, Parade, fair. Parade, what is it? <laughs> Love My Pet Fair Parade. It's Saturday the 23rd. And who did they get to be the, the Grand Marshal? Did they get one yet? Police chief maybe or something? Fire chief? I'm still looking no? for volunteer. You're still looking for a volunteer. Done. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> still working at it. So okay. if anybody wants to volunteer, the parade will start around 11 o'clock, there's a lot of shows, there'll be a lot of vendors there giving away prizes, um, there'll be a photo booth for all the pets and all the families that want to take pictures of their pets, so come on by and step by. And it's down at Riverview Park? Correct. Yeah. Very nice. Yes. All right. Um, what happened at the movie in the park? Because I know it was kind of sprinkling and cool, and does anybody know how many? We ended up with about half of what we typically would. But it, it went on, and there was no downpours, a little bit of sprinkling, but uh, I, I want to say 250, approximately. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Other business, Mr. Hammer. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this Friday is the home opener for the Minnesota Blue Ox at the Coon Rapids Ice Center. Uh, I believe the puck drops at seven o'clock. Tickets go on sale at five, and um, they opened their season last week with a couple of wins. So they come home for their home opener. I think it's a Minnesota Wild Night, and they've got some other promotions and things going on. So they are at home both Friday and Saturday night. So there will be games both evenings at the Ice Center uh, this weekend. I would, I would almost think Friday night would sell out. I mean, because that's not like two-sided stands. I mean, that's one-sided stand, and that should be pretty popular, Mr. Stemwell. Mayor Council, I would agree. There seems to be a lot of energy around this. I um, also have noticed that they're playing a team called the Minnesota Moose, which is out of Fogarty Arena in Blaine. So oh there could be a draw from people over there. Yeah. And then they play the Minnesota Mullets on Saturday night out of Forest Lake. So. <laughs> <laughs> Get your tickets oh, early. <laughs> <laughs> that name doesn't seem timeless. You know, it seems like that it sailed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, excellent. Other business to come before council this evening? Mr. Mayor. Council Member uh, Kraskoviak. I just wanted to point out, I'm getting a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls on our recycling ordinance. I voted for it, uh, but I believe that we should reevaluate the ordinance, I'll possibly have some discussion on it at an upcoming meeting, and I would just like to uh, get council's feedback on, on doing that. So, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Johnson. I'd be supportive of that. I've been hearing about it too, and, and I know we've workshopped on it and stuff like that, but I'd be supportive of having a further conversation about it. Excellent. Mr. Stemmuddle? Uh, Mayor Council, on that topic, um, I think we have some time on October 10th, if it would be the Council's direction to bring that to a work session at that point. Uh, we would have, I think we have plenty of time to put that on the agenda for that night if, if there's consensus for that. Yeah, I would, I would support actually the, the Council meeting October 3rd and actually have a public meeting on it because I, I don't think this ever really got aired out and I would love to actually have a public discussion on it and because I, I think that it needs to be really addressed. Mr. Mayor? Councilmember Geisler? Um, I would support a public input discussion. I'm not sure if a council meeting is the right venue. Um, I think more of a workshop type situation where we can flesh out what are the issues 
um, the, the property owners are finding with the ordinance and also then look at what are our goals and objectives to try and make sure that we can actually work through the process. Um, and so to me, more of a workshop or working session would um, best facilitate that, but I absolutely think um, public discussion is important and to, to make it a more of an open dialogue where we can be working on things and to me, the council meeting is not where we would make do with that type of a work on the create an ordinance on the fly I'd rather have so, a working <coughs> session then take it to workshop um, before it would come to council yeah I would still support the October 3rd meeting and actually allow them to come in and have their voice heard because I think that I, I, I don't I don't know that we can fix this um, and I, I think that it would be the first step in <clears throat> getting rid of it so but mayor in light of all the information that I'm getting that I didn't have before I do feel I may have made uh, a misjudgment in my vote and uh, I would be in favor of bringing it to the next council meeting for a rescission vote yeah so I'll mm -hmm. second that no. okay Mr. Stemwell <laughs> yes I'm looking for some Direction in that regard then versus October 3rd or 10th. Um, if it, uh, a rescission vote per se, uh, the ordinance would have to follow the same process, I believe, as any other ordinance. So okay. introduction and then, you know, a, a formal vote. And so if it's, if it's the desire of council to actually introduce an ordinance on October 3rd, then I would suggest that there be some motion made today providing formal direction to do that. If it's, Discussion on October 3rd and simply and not an actual introduction of ordinance and that's probably unnecessary Then it would be the 10th and the first meeting in November And so I guess that's I'm looking maybe for a little consensus on Where to go with that just a question Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councilmember Johnson. So if the concept were at the October 3rd meeting to address the issue of rescission would that be in the form of a resolution or would it be in the form of a further ordinance change? It would be a repeal. It'd be repealing an ordinance. Mm -hmm. But it's not repealing the ordinance. It's just repealing some language, a portion of the language. Right. So the way I envision it would be is we, you know, how last time we had the lines that were double lined. Yep. Yep. To show the new language. Well, those would now be the cross out lines, and we would double line the old language and kind of put it back to where it was before it, where we were at. So okay. It's not, so it'd be an ordinance change. Then. Or an ordinance change. Okay. We're not repealing the ordinance because that would be repealing its entirety, and we're not doing that. We're simply changing back the ordinance to what it was before. Thank you for the clarification. So that's procedurally how I envision it. But that would still require the <laughs> introduction, introduction yeah. adoption, and adoption. Okay. Thank you. So you would need you would need you would want to know that there's a majority of the council that would support bringing that to an introduction at the third then. So, all right, Council Well, that would be my point. I'm getting all these emails. I'm collecting all this information. I don't know if it's been shared with the rest of everybody, and we haven't really talked about it. Um, I, think, I think what I'm hearing is pretty obvious, uh, but we haven't discussed it as a council, that portion of it. That's new information. That's what I'd like to see discussed. So, so you would like to discuss it at a, at a workshop then on the 10th, or you would like to see us discuss it at the council meeting on the 3rd, or what would you like? Is then? there a work session between now and the 3rd? Uh, no, I don't think so, is there? There, you know, uh, Mayor Council, there's not. Next Tuesday, we're having kind of a joint meeting with Parks and Rec Commission. Oh, yeah. really um, you know, absent creating a special meeting, which is certainly possible. We don't have an open Tuesday between now and the 3rd. To, to do that so the, we have an open work session on the 10th um, if it was the direction of council at the 10th to bring the introduction to I guess it would be the 17th I think I missed a meeting there and then uh, final vote on first meeting in November I'm not sure what the date is at this point so procedurally though I guess if it you know coming out of the meeting in the 10th if it was the direction of council uh, to reconsider it you know we'd notify property owners at that point that is being reconsidered then on the 17th or introduction and sort of starting the process but um, 
yeah, again, back to council's discretion in that regard. May I make a suggestion? And I, I don't know what we've got scheduled for a pre-meeting workshop on the third. Hmm. Um, but if there is a little bit of space, and um, and there's enough support on the council here to, uh, you know, at least put an introduction out there on the third, I'd be open to coming in. 6:30 to hear from people. I mean, we, we've talked about this a fair amount already, um, but what we were lacking was some of the additional input that, and this is just sometimes how it is. After the council acts, mm -hmm. you know, you hear from more people that are impacted than you heard from as you were trying to get feedback while the process was working through. So I'd be open to to hearing from people on the third and then. Um, having that input when we go into the meeting on the third. Mr. Stemwell. Another way to potentially think about it is that if, you know, if the introduction occurred on the third, you could still hold the work session on the 10th to sort of deep dive into it with the formal vote coming then on the 17th. Oh, I like that plan. <laughs> <laughs> If, but again, if, so if that's council's desire, we would introduce it the third. Doesn't mean it's happening necessarily, but right. the process has started. Okay. So but at least it's the, clock, the clock is moving. Right. So I would support that. Yep. 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 that I, we have two weeks either way. Yep. Yep. We can, and if we put something in on the third and then after the workshop, that's not what we like, mm -hmm. we can, we can strike, it. strike it and change, it, it's two yeah. weeks of difference one way or yep. another. And yeah. Yeah. Yep. Obviously. Don't enforce it between now and then. <laughs> Mr. Brody? The only caveat I would add is if we somehow at that workshop changes. make some substantial yeah. changes to it, we'd have yeah. to reintroduce it. Yeah. And, sure. And that's and, a reason. On the 17th. On the 17th or depending on how long it takes us to, to redo that. Yep. All right. So just I want to make sure this is clear. Sorry yeah. to beat a horse here. The, the introduction on the third is just going back to the previous language prior to the change this summer. It's an undo. An undo. It's an undo. I'm, I'm seeing one, two, you know, heads. It, maybe it's, yes. an, it's an undo Five of six. to hold us through till we can okay. track on the 10th. Proposed Got undo. <laughs> and do what we should Clear. have done the first place. Right. All right. Excellent. Any other business come before council? Nothing else going on around town? All right. Nice. We're, we're going to praise the golf course, I'll take. So I, I have a coworker who lives on one of the really uh, exclusive golf courses around, and, and she was telling me she's been switching to playing Bunker and eating at Kendall's a lot more because it's uh, sort of a hidden jewel. So I thought you'd appreciate that. I was going to tell you after the meeting, but now it's in the minutes. <laughs> now let's make it not hidden. <laughs> <laughs> This Saturday, the 23rd, Hope for Youth has their walk at the golf course, which is the darkest night of your life, the, their fundraiser. And it's... Um, the darkest night of the year, isn't that it? Or something or, this? Yes. Fantastic. It, yeah. It was incredible. Incredible. They put the luminaires up through, and you walk through the dark with the luminaires around the course. It's fascinating. So. Yeah. Chief. Just quick then, can we throw a couple props to Coon Arabs High School's homecoming week? Yes. Home, the homecoming parade is Wednesday evening, so people be mindful of that. Northdale Boulevard will be closed for that segment in front of the high school. Yeah. Um, I happen to be the Grand Marshal this year, so <laughs> I'm just saying. And then the uh, football team, of course, is 2-1 and one and has a big game then against Irondale at home. So just thought I'd throw that out there. That's a, a huge deal. They had their, their first win since 2014, and then they had a second one in a row. And I watched that. I watched the video of the pep fist. Of the pep fest. Those kids were legitimately pumped. It was awesome. So fun stuff. That's Barbara Demmer. Thank you for reminding me. At the last meeting, I totally spaced out and just wish, wishing everyone a great start to the school year. So a couple weeks late, but you know, teachers, kids. I mean, go get them. All right. Any other business? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>